Hello and welcome to this week's Women's Football Chat, coming to you from an extremely snowy East Midlands. My name is Chris Gansby. I'm here every Thursday at 6pm bringing you the very latest from the third and fourth tiers of women's football here in England. That's the FA Women's National League. Uh, well, I thought we were past the worst of the weather, but certainly here at least, it is supposed to uh, carry on snowing for a good while yet. Um, and just have a look at the uh, weather forecast. Um, yeah, it's meant to keep snowing for quite a while um, here in the East Midlands. In fact, all of tomorrow, uh, Friday, and over Saturday night as well. Um, so we may end up with some games falling foul of the weather this weekend. Hopefully not. We're so close to the end of the season now. Um, and some of the teams at least are so... Uh, they have fixtures every weekend that we really can't afford any postponements. But we'll have to see what uh, what happens with that. Let's get straight down to it then because we've got plenty to talk about. Um, and we're going to start, as we always do, with the results in the Northern Premier Division. Um, Burnley, a convincing 5-1 victory. They had to take advantage this weekend with Forest and Wolves not playing in the league. Uh, and they certainly did that. A 5-1 victory over Bolmere St. Michael's. Uh, a brace for Laura Elford, 17th and 59th minute. Dominique Cooper in the 56th. Millie Grace Ravening in the 69th. And one that's missing. It was an own goal in the 14th minute. Um, so Burnley had gone 2-0 up in that game. Jessica Keeling then got one back for Bolmere St. Michael's to make it 2-1. But Burnley then run away with it in the end. Derby County 2, Huddersfield 1. Yet again, Derby, they seem to be the late goal merchants uh, so far this season. And those late goals are just about keeping them uh, on the fringe of the conversation for the title. They do need other results to go their way. Um, but uh, you can't necessarily count Derby out just yet. Amy Sims in the 12th minute, uh, putting them in front. They were 1-0 up at half-time. Autumn Housel in the 57th minute, equalising for Huddersfield Town and Camille Jenkins uh, in the 91st minute, giving Derby the victory. We'll have a look at the table in a minute and you'll see what I mean about uh, them being on the cusp. Still of the conversation, uh, Liverpool Feds 2, West Bromwich Albion 1, Ellie Fletcher and Katie Thomas uh, with two goals for Liverpool Feds. Both of those coming before the 25-minute mark. Delphi Cole with the goal for West Brom and Stoke City, a 3-0 victory over Loughborough Lightning. Rosine Kivell opening the scoring in the 17th minute, Noala Miskiel in the 80th minute and Holly Gibson in the 90th, a 3-0 victory for Stoke. Um, Northern Premier Division table then. Uh, so Forest still top. They're by, top by three points, as uh, I said, having not played. Burnley now three points behind them, but with a game in hand. Uh, they leapfrog Wolves, who also didn't play. They're on 34. Wolves are on 32, also with a game in hand over Forest. So uh, they could get to 35. So it could be 37, 37, 35. Uh, Forest and Burnley have got to play each other. Burnley and Wolves have got to play each other. Um, but Forest haven't got Wolves to play anymore. And then there's Derby there. Um, more games played than the sides they're trying to catch, but they are only five points back from Forest. So they do need other results to go their way. But they are in control for some of it. Derby have, in their six games left to play, Forest, Burnley and Wolves. So, you know, Derby can at least take three points off the other sides that they're trying to catch. Yes, they need other results to go their way, but with Burnley facing Wolves and Forest facing Burnley, let's say, for example, their draws, if Derby can keep on winning, then they might find themselves getting themselves into a bit of a challenge uh, towards the uh, final couple of games of the season. Um, interesting uh, point that I found, which I I will come on to later. And if you don't know the results of the cup competitions, you probably do anyway. But um, so Forest and Watford won their uh, respective cup matches. We'll get on to those later. Um, but it's in an interesting situation now where barring the weather or anything else happening, Forest could be in a situation where they win two trophies in one day because the 23rd of April, which is the penultimate league weekend, Forest are in the cup final, so they could win the cup. But also, if results between now and then go Forest's way and Burnley and Wolves are both playing in the league on the 23rd, 
If results go Forest's way between now and then, they could win the league that day without even playing. I suspect that's not going to happen. I think it's going to come down to the final day, but you never know. Um, So further on in the Northern Premier Division table, Stoke City up a place over Huddersfield Town. Huddersfield uh, now 19 points off the top of the table. They've uh, fallen away a bit uh, over uh, 2023. Liverpool Feds up over Fylde down towards the bottom there. So Feds up to ninth, Fylde down in 10th. Uh, Bournemouth St. Michael's four points adrift now of safety after that loss to Burnley and Loughborough Lightning after losing to Stoke. Still without a win so far this season. They're 12 points away from safety. They do have 18 available uh, to them, um, so, but they do need to start winning very, very quickly. Um, and this weekend, they have Forest. Um, so an interesting one there. But then after Forest, they have got... West Brom, who are not safe yet. Liverpool Feds, who are not safe yet. Boldmere, who are not safe yet. Fylde, who are definitely not safe yet. And Huddersfield, who probably are but aren't in a good run of form. So there's opportunities there for Loughborough. Um, But they do need at least uh, five wins. Well, they need 13 points from a possible 18. So they need four wins and draws at the very minimum. Um, so it's looking very unlikely, I have to say. Let's have a look at Southern uh, Premier Division results then. Um, so we've got Bridgewater United 1, Billericay Town 2. Close game here. Um, Jessica King and Morgan Rogers with the goals for Billericay Town. Megan Jarvis opening the scoring for Bridgewater with their only goal on the 15-minute mark. Ipswich Town, Farina win over Plymouth Argyle. Uh, Anna Gray with a brace and Freya Godfrey with the other goal for Ipswich. Uh, Milton Keynes Dons, a 2 0 away win at uh, London Bees. Angela Nixon and Zoe Barrett with the goals there. A 6 1 thumping of Crawley Wasps by Oxford. Uh, a hat trick each for Carly Johns, 12 28th and 56th minute. And Daisy McLaughlin, 27 61st and 63rd minute. Uh, for Oxford, Amelia Ajeo with the only goal for Crawley Wasps, but you know, three goals in a uh, in a seven minute spell for Oxford in the second half, and that comes after two goals in two minutes in the first half. Um, just really put the game to bed um, you know, relatively early on. Let's like say there before the uh, you know just after the hour mark. Sorry. Uh, Oxford had six and the game was long gone. Uh, the late kickoff in the uh, Southern Premier Division, Gillingham 2, Cheltenham Town 1. Uh, information is uh, a little bit uh, few and far between here. Um, the only information we've got is that Cheltenham's goal was a penalty to Emily Owen in the 69th minute. Gillingham have given us no information about their um, goal scorers, but they get the 2-1 victory. What it means for the table, uh, Portsmouth, who of course weren't playing, they were in the cup semi-finals. They drop down to third. Uh, Oxford United and Ipswich Town both climb above them and Oxford have a game in hand still as well. This is kind of what we expected to happen once those games in hand got made up. Um, but Portsmouth, you know, still only two points off the top. And even if Oxford win that game in hand, it's five points off the top. So we're uh, not trying to discredit Portsmouth at all. Uh, Watford, of course, also didn't play. They were in the cup. Billericay Town, uh, they got that victory, but they're uh, kind of a little bit in no man's land at the moment. Uh, they're six points away from Watford. That group of three teams chasing them down all have games in hand. So uh, Billericay Town could well uh, drop uh, several places in the table. Milton Keynes Dons, three points behind them with three in hand. Gillingham, three points behind them with two in hand. Cheltenham, three points behind them with one in hand. Um, and the goal difference, only Cheltenham have a worse goal difference than Billericay Town. So Billericay could drop quite a bit, uh, a few places there, but they are 10 points clear of relegation. So I don't think they're in that sort of battle at all um, because there are only six games to go. Uh, for the teams chasing it. Uh, A bit further down, Milton Keynes, Dons, Gillingham, both up a place over Cheltenham. Uh, Obviously, Gillingham beating Cheltenham, Milton Keynes, Dons beating London Bees, so a bit of a swing there. Plymouth, Argyle, they lost to Ipswich, London Bees, they lost, Bridgewater United, they lost, and Crawley, they lost. So everything at the bottom is the same, the gaps are the same. Uh, Crawley Wasps need eight points 
uh, minimum and they have six games left to get it. Bridgewater United have a better goal difference than London Bees and Plymouth uh, and are only one point away from safety. So that one could go down to the wire as well. We just have a very quick look uh, at Crawley's running. Uh, they've got MK Dons, they've got Watford, Ipswich, Oxford. So of the six games they've got left, they've got to play the top uh, three, four. Yeah, they have got to play the top four. They've got to play Portsmouth as well. So they've got to play the top four. Um, that puts them on 20 with like seven. Maybe they get a draw there somewhere. But I think Crawley have run out of winnable games uh, in the Southern Premier Division to be able to stay up, unfortunately, for Crawley. Division 1 North then. Let's move down into Tier 4. Uh, results in Division 1 4. Chorley 1, Bradford City 2. Uh, Chorley with the defeat to Bradford in this one. Uh, a brace for Ariane Parnham uh, and a goal. Uh, so that's a brace for Ariane Parnham for Bradford City. Megan Searson with the goal for Chorley, but another important victory for Bradford. Durham Sestra, rather unsurprisingly, keeping up their winning run. Faye Dale in the second minute, Poppy Pritchard in the 27th, uh, and that was the uh, all the scoring in that away fixture to Hull. Uh, Merseyrail 1, Middlesbrough 1. Good uh, draw for Merseyrail. 0 0 at half time in this one. Jessica Dawson with Middlesbrough's goal. Millie Fitzpatrick just four minutes from time with the goal for Merseyrail. Newcastle United keeping up that pressure on Durham. A brace for Casey Elson lifts them over Leeds United by two goals to nil. And a very convincing 6 0 victory for Barnsley, who are only 1 0 up at half time. But a brace for Louise Biggins and Natalie Shaw. And then Delilah Herdis and Brooke Martin off the substitutes bench give Barnsley a 6-0 victory. North table then looks like this. So Durham, Sestra, uh, Newcastle United, Barnsley, Stockport County, Hull City all remain in the 1-5 to five spots. Durham, Sestra have that seven-point gap over Newcastle. But Newcastle have two games in hand that could come down to one point. And the goal difference by the time Newcastle have won those two games uh, will only be one or two goals as well, if they win those two games, of course. Uh, Barnsley also have two games in hand over Durham Sestra, but they are tw uh, 12 points back. So uh, it's going to be a tall order for Barnsley, who have got seven games to go, have to win four of them just to catch up to Durham uh, as it stands at the moment. So I do believe it is still a two horse race there. Um, in the mid table is where uh, teams have moved Middlesbrough have jumped over Leeds by a place York have jumped over Norton Stockton Ancients by a place Leeds still only played 12 games this season they've got 10 to play and we have uh, about 7 weeks to get those games in um, so it's going to be a tall order for uh, Leeds plenty of midweek games that they're going to have coming up um, towards the bottom you've got Merseyrail who've only got 4 games to play and they are seven points away from safety. Um, so they need to win three of those four games uh, just to have a chance of staying up. They have, uh, we've mentioned this before, they've got Bradford, um, which is a really important game for both of those sides. We've got uh, Norton Stockton Ancients, who are currently in eighth and five points clear of the relegation zone. Uh, then they've got Stockport County, who are currently in fourth, and Leeds, who are mid-table and playing fixtures probably every single day, to try and get those fixtures in. Um, so Mersey Rail you know, really need to uh, win the game this weekend against Bradford if, of course, it goes ahead because the snow is coming down much heavier now uh, here in the East Midlands. Um, yeah, Bradford have really pulled themselves into a, uh, into a position whereby they may survive. They now have a game in hand over Chorley. They are three points back um, from Chorley. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, they're getting themselves into a, into a situation where they could survive. Now, I'll be honest, I would love to give you a bit more information about how Bradford have been doing. But every time you click on like full table detail, it takes you to some weird league. Um, but they have a couple of, they had a couple of victories over Chorley. In fact, it was back to back victories over Chorley um, that has given them six points uh, recently. And it's really done them a world of good because they were on, you know, six points only a few weeks ago. Um, and it that has made a real difference um, to the way that the table looks. I mean, yeah, ju just you know, 9th of February, they were on six points uh, and it was a, a five-point margin back to Chorley. They've now got two wins over them 
and it's now a three point gap. So, you know, Bradford are uh, not going to go down without a fight, let's put it that way. Um, in Division 1 North, Mersey Rail really need to get some wins and get them quickly. Of course, it is com completely out of their hands now because uh, with them having played more games than everybody else, let's say, for example, that Bradford win that game over uh, over Mersey Rail this weekend, that's then going to be a uh, at least a seven-point gap to safety and then only, uh, only nine available. And then you have to, because of the goal difference, win all three. Uh, Division 1 Midlands results then, let's uh, keep things rolling. Uh, Northampton Town 1, Sporting Cows at 0. Uh, goal in that one, Zoe Boot uh, in the 21st minute, the only goal of the game. Sheffield 1, Leek Town 1, two teams down near the bottom of the table. Uh, both goals coming in the first half, Mariah McIntosh for Sheffield, Cassie Hyde for Leek. Uh, a point apiece for them. Stour Bridge beating Doncaster Rovers Bells by two goals to nil. This was the big clash at the top of Division 1 Midlands. And Stour Bridge come away with the win. Millie Rogers in the 52nd minute and Alice Nickling in the 72nd minute with the goals for Stour Bridge. Really important as we'll see on the table. 2-0 victory over Doncaster. Wemtown 1-0 victory over Long Eaton United. Substitute Lucy Brown with the only goal of the game. And in the late kickoff, Solihull Moors 4, Peterborough United 0. A brace for Rebecca Knight, one for Zoe Creaney and one for Tiana Russell Cartwright uh, with uh, the goals for Solihull Moors. What it means for the table, let's start at the top. Stourbridge, three points clear of Doncaster Rovers Bells and they have a game in hand and they have greater goal difference. Um, but... Both those sides still have eight games to play, so do not by any stretch of the imagination think that that title race is over. Um, Sporting Cows only have five games left to go and they are already five points back um, from Stourbridge, so perhaps it uh, is just a little bit too much for Sporting Cows. Uh, that being said, they've got Long Eaton United, they've got Sheffield uh, to face. They do also, though, have Doncaster Rovers Bells and Solihull more. So they definitely need to win both of those games. As I said, Stourbridge still have nine games to play. Doncaster Rovers still have eight. Uh, so two teams, again, that are going to be very busy towards the latter half of this season. Um, Solihull Moors up a place. Northampton Town up two. Peterborough United down two. Leaford Athletic down one uh, after those results. Um, so with so Solihull Moors winning 4-0, Northampton Town winning uh, by a goal to nil. Peterborough losing, Leaford Athletic not playing. Uh, that's why they've dropped. And then towards the bottom, that point for Wemtown and their better goal difference has lifted. Sorry, the three points for Wemtown that overdid Leak Town's one, uh, one point from the draw with Sheffield means that Wemtown are now out of the relegation zone by two goals, although they do have a game in hand over Leak Town. Long Eaton United survive for another week. Uh, they are 14 points away from safety with 15 available to them. They need to win though because of the goal difference. Well, irrelevant. They need because they need 14 points. They have to win all five games uh, in order to stay in the division. Uh, and that's assuming that Wemtown and Leak Town don't win a single game for the rest of the season or don't get a single point for the rest of the season. Long Eaton United have Leafield Athletic. Uh, that is this weekend. Um, and then they also have to face, though, Stourbridge later on in the season. So uh, even though they have survived for another week, I strongly suspect that on next week's show, uh, we will see an R against their name. Um, let's go through then to Division 1 South East. Just four games, of course, uh, in Division 1 South East after Hounslow uh, folded out of the league. Uh, it's left uh, Division 1 South East kind of just picking up the pieces really and just finishing their games off. Uh, but there is still a title race in that one. AFC Wimbledon 4, Chesham United 1. Uh, Golds Wimbledon, Emma Jane Plewer in the 7th minute, Hannah Billingham in the 23rd, Emily Donovan in the 54th and Eleanor Dory in the 78th minute. Uh, giving Wimbledon a 4-1 victory. Cheshire had equalised uh, in the 8th minute, Natalia Makowska. Um, so two goals in the first 8 minutes, one aside in that one. But Wimbledon come away with the win. Actonians 2-0 winners away at Cambridge City. Jasmine Williamson and Chichiro Ebine with the goals for Actonians. Uh, and Ashford Town 2-0 away winners at London Seawood. Great result for Ashford. Two goals in the final 10 minutes, both to Ashley Cheatley, 82nd and 90th. 
uh, means that they get the 2-0 victory. And in the later kickoff, hashtag United 4, Norwich City 1. Uh, goals in this one. Katie Knights with the only goal for Norwich. Uh, goals for hashtag United who were 1-0 up at half time uh, because of a own goal uh, from Eloise Moran uh, in the first half for Norwich. Um, so Emma Samways 49th minute, Samantha Roland 52nd minute and Malika Pindagil in the 85th minute. 4-1 uh, victory for Hashtag United. It means the gap at the top remains the same. It's two points, but it is a much closer title race now than it was after those results against Hounslow were removed because Hashtag lost out in that one. Uh, they lost and said it was 29 goals and six points um, because of uh, Hounslow's removal. So it has closed that title race up. One slip up. Um, from Hashtag United and Wimbledon could overtake them and get themselves into first. So uh, six games left for each of those two sides. Uh, and the bottom, it doesn't really matter because there is no relegation now. Um, and there has been no movement uh, in, Div in Division 1 South East either from the last uh, last week as well. Division 1 South West, then we've got one midweek game to, uh, to talk about. And that was last Friday. Thursday, uh, Cardiff City beating Kinchin by four goals to nil. All the goals coming off the substitutes bench. Ellie Sargent with a brace. Grace Horrell uh, with a goal as well, as well as Ingrid Ireland. Uh, There's a Cardiff four nil winners over Keensham. Uh, Swindon Town, this is back in uh, on Sunday now. Swindon Town, one nil away winners at Austell. A late goal there. Annabelle Colston in the 88th minute with the only goal of the game. Cardiff win the big game at the top by two goals to nil over Bournemouth. Caitlin Morgan Hemmings in the 30th minute. Corey Williams from the penalty spot in the 70th minute. Uh, Keensham 2, Mainhead United 0. Naomi Clipston in the first minute put Keensham ahead. They went down to 10 on the stroke of half time. Book Stirrup shown a straight red card, uh, but it didn't stop them. And Jade Munro, 11 minutes from time, made it 2 0, and they held on to it for the three points. Um, Exeter City maintain their uh, lead at the top. 4 0 away win over Larkle. Uh, Sarah Stacey in the seventh minute. Uh, Zoe Watkins, 29th. Jenna Markham, 65th. And Ishbel Zumund in the 73rd minute with the win for Exeter. A draw for Moneyfields against Southampton Women's. One apiece here. Shannon Albury putting Southampton ahead in the first half in the 38th minute. And then second half off the bench, Colony Taylor. Uh, with the equaliser for Moneyfields. And finally, Porter Z Town 1, Celsi 0. Uh, Rosie Hill in the 50th minute with the only goal in this one. In Southwest Table, there's only one move. Uh, Keensham Town towards the bottom, up one place over Maidenhead United after they beat them at the weekend. Uh, so Keensham now six points uh, clear of the relegation zone. AFC Austell, they are 10 points away from safety. And with six games to go, uh, Larkwell Athletic with five games to go and they're four points away from safety. Austell have got to finish their season off. Games against the teams around them. They've got Maidenhead, Keensham, Portezeb, but yes, they are all away. They've got to play Larkwell at home and they do have two games against Moneyfields in that. But if AFC Austell can get results uh, in those Maidenhead, Keensham, Portezeb and Larkwell games, they're the four teams above them that they're trying to catch. Uh, then yeah, maybe a great escape is on. But they are obviously still relying on results to go heavily um, their way as well. It's probably easier than Larkall Athletics running. Uh, they need four points minimum. Plus, of course, you can see on the table there, Maidenhead, Keensham and Porter Z uh, all have, and Selsey to be fair, all have two games in hand over Larkall. Larkall have got to play Cardiff and Bournemouth. So you feel that's probably two games out. Uh, then they've got that game against um, Austell, they've got Maidenhead as well uh, and they've got to play Celsius. so again there are games there that Larkall could capitalise on um, Maidenhead will may end up having a big say in who goes down and it could still be Maidenhead as well um, so Division 1 South West is certainly one to keep an eye on uh, those are the league fixtures, let's have a look now at the two cup semi-finals that were played um at the weekend, Forest against Portsmouth and Watford against Wolves. A very convincing and almost statement victory from Forest, who beat the then top of the Southern Premier Division by five goals to nil um, at home. Lindsay Harkin 
with the goal in the first half in the 38th minute, then Rebecca Anderson in the 50th, Charlotte Greengrass in the 59th, Rebecca Anderson in the 64th, and May Moncaster in the 90th minute. A convincing 5-0 victory for Forrest. Uh, and Watford beating Wolves by two goals to nil. Andrea Gorgiou in the 16th minute and Fabro in the 42nd minute um, with the goals for Watford. So, uh, it's going to be a Forest against Watford final. That is at Burton's Pirelli Stadium on the 23rd of April. Uh, that's a 3.30 kickoff. Obviously, after the uh, Reserve Cup competition um, concludes earlier in the day. So the plate, we've got North versus North. And in the uh, Cup, we've got North versus South. So Forest against Watford, the final. And of course, we will uh, preview that closer to April. Um, right, that is the fixtures. Um, sorry, those are the results, sorry, from the last seven days. Let's now look at the news. And the big news, uh, title of this video as well, sorry I'm one day late. Um, it was International Women's Day. Um, and some of the clubs decided to mark that with information about... Um, more support and funding from the men's team to the women's team. Stoke and Derby, to name just a couple. There may have been others. I did have a check uh, before I started recording this show. Couldn't see any others, but I do apologise if I've missed them. Um, the, the thing I found interesting from that was the reaction when a team hadn't done that. Um, and I am going to focus on the Northern Premier Division because this is where all this stems from. Um, Huddersfield Town who put out a, uh, a tweet about supporting the, the women, but kind of not financially in helping. It was just like, oh, yeah, this, uh, the, these are the women's teams and it's International Women's Day, etc. Whereas like Stoke and Derby both said, yeah, extra funding, we're going to put all this in so they can get even better facilities, etc., etc., because they're trying to obviously get themselves up into the championship like a lot of teams uh, are. You know, there are a good five or six teams there um, in the Northern Premier and in the Southern Premier as well that have these ambitions of, of going up. And of course, only one team can and it might not even be from that league. And we're not going to get into that discussion because that's for something further down the line, closer to the playoff final. Um, but the quote tweets that people coming up off Huddersfield about how they were being left behind and and it was really interesting. I mentioned it briefly last week and had a couple of comments about no, the teams that are affiliated with a men's side that are, as a general rule, and there are exceptions to it, doing better than teams that aren't. And, you know, yes, some teams literally just use the badge and the name and that's it. And some have a lot of funding and support and help that goes in. But it's interesting to see how a lot of the fan base is angry about the lack of investment in some teams. Now, we saw a few uh, a few weeks ago, maybe what, five, six weeks ago now, those pictures that came out of Stoke's ground and how that was uh, that was so appalling. And now Stoke have said, no, coming in, more funding, more all the rest of it. So hopefully that will get sorted. But I just found it interesting that you know, people are shouting as much as they can. The other good thread, if you want a, a good Twitter thread to go and read, Go and read uh, London Seawood's Twitter thread about um, socks because you know, there is these these tweets ago, you know, we're supporting women's football, da, 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 da. but even basic stuff like the socks because women's feet are different to men's feet, but the socks aren't tailored to women. The boots aren't tailored to women. Um, so they have, and there's some good pictures on there of socks riling up and being more uncomfortable to play with. So go and check that out because London Seawood... Uh, you know, particularly uh, in the last few weeks, have really started to shout about uh, some of the uh, troubles that uh, you know, women's football teams face. They're fascinating reads. Um, so, uh, yeah, go and check out that as a Twitter thread. But, yeah, it was just an interesting one. International Women's Day yesterday, of course, I've uh, been around women's football now for uh, da -da 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 -da, five years now. I've been doing this show for two. Um. So, uh, yeah, International uh, Women's Day. Some clubs have done great things. Some, you feel, almost tweeted because they felt they had to. Might be a bit wrong with that, but you know, particularly some of the clubs 
it's the end, like the backlash over Huddersfield. Um, you know, tweeted about it and then just said, well, why aren't you doing this, that, and the other? Look at all these other teams. They, you know, I mean, Stoke said they're going semi-pro 23-24. So people are piling on that and going, well, this is what teams are doing to get up. We need to be doing the same. Why aren't we doing the same? And then, uh, then fans are getting annoyed. But uh, you, know, you can all, uh, you can make your own opinions on that. Um, we won't get into that uh, in, in too much detail. But um, so, yep, it was International Women's Day. That was really the news. We've had obviously the cup final come through as well. The second um, behind the ball is out from the uh, FAWNL as well. So go and have a watch um, of that. Uh, right, fixtures. Northern fixtures. It's the final midweek week of the uh, of the season um if you want to call it that it's the one where everybody's meant to be playing in midweek there are of course some that are having to dip in because i'm looking at some of this now and thinking that we're going to lose games over the weekend um right filed against wolves that's 10th against third so you feel like wolves will probably get the win in that one bomb this at michael's against forest that's 11th against first again you probably feel that forest will get the win in that one brig house against west bromwich albion two mid-table teams uh, West Brom just looking over their shoulders ever so slightly um, at the uh, at the bottom two. They're six points clear at the moment, but they have games in hand. Huddersfield against Derby County, seventh against fourth. Of course, they played last week. Derby won it uh, in added time. Will the same thing happen away from home? And Stoke City against Burnley, that is sixth against second. So no game for Loughborough Lightning. Um, so uh, they can't even with um, a filed victory over Wolves, which you say, unlikely, they did do it in the reverse fixture, don't forget. Uh, and filed uh, have, and it has just reminded me, actually, so bear with me two seconds, uh, that they are um, in a position now because they have a new uh, manager. Bear with me two seconds. Um da -da 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 -da. I've got to try and find it again now. So, yes, uh, Danielle Young uh, has left her role here. It's Danielle Young has resigned from her position as first team manager um, and she is going to continue with the squad as an influential player. With immediate effect, James Mallett, head coach for the women's team, will also assume the duties of interim first team manager. Um, and the club has apparently already initiated the process for recruitment of a first team manager in advance of the 23-24 season. So uh, Wolves uh, lost to Fylde uh, at home uh, in January. And then just as they're coming up to play them again, they've had a, a bit of a managerial swap. So uh, maybe Fylde, four points uh, away from safety. If they could do something over Wolves again, could be very big in the title race. Then we go into midweek. Tuesday, Bournemouth St. Michael's against Stoke City. That is 11th against 6th. AFC filed against Liverpool Feds. That is 10th against 9th. Really important game there towards the bottom. And Burnley against Brighouse Town. Brighouse Town, of course, on a great run of form. They only have five games to go and they're 11 points off the top. So they're too far adrift to get involved in a title discussion themselves because the maximum that Brighouse can get to is 41 and you have to think that with seven games to go, Forest will get four points out of 21. Um, so too far back from Brighouse, but they could well have a say in the uh, in who wins the title because they have to play Burnley, they have to play Derby, they have to play Forest, and they have to play Wolves. Um, so they are playing all four of the teams uh, above them in the table between now and the end of the season. So Brighouse could well have a big uh, decision or sorry, big influence on who comes out with a title. If it, if a if a Forest or a Burnley or a Wolves slip up against them, uh, and then other teams win that game against them, it is going to be a bit of a swing. Um, there are games on Thursday. Obviously, that will be covered on next week's show. Uh, through into the Southern Premier Division, then uh, Billericay Town against Bridgewater United. That is uh, fifth against 11th. Ipswich Town against London Bees is second against 10th. London Bees only a point uh, above the relegation zone. Ipswich Town only a point behind Oxford at the top. Uh, Milton Keynes Dons against Crawley Wasps. That is sixth against 12th. 
Uh, and then Portsmouth against Plymouth Argyle is third against ninth. Gillingham against Watford, seventh against fourth. So uh, Portsmouth and Ipswich, they are playing. Uh, and as are Watford, but they can't overtake Oxford. So Ipswich and Portsmouth are playing. Oxford aren't. Um, so they could drop down to third again and we get this chopping and changing. But then Oxford will have two games in hand and it's all uh, slightly messy. Then in the week, uh, Gillingham against Billericay Town, seventh against fifth. Oxford United against MK Dons uh, in the week as well. That's first against sixth, where it is at the moment. And then on Wednesday, um, it's Watford against Crawley Wasps, fourth against 12. So Watford with the possibility for six points this week. They've got Gillingham in seventh, Crawley Wasps in 12. Crawley Wasps playing twice this weekend as well. So if results don't go their way, uh, they could find themselves in a bit of bother. Let's say, for example, and it's possible, Crawley Wasps lose both their games. They stay on seven points with 12 available. Uh, London Bees beat Ipswich. That gap then goes to nine. Plymouth could win as well. So the gap could be you know, nine points uh, with 12 available for Crawley. And then you're looking at the uh, teams that they've got and you, you, know, you still have Oxford, uh, sorry, Ipswich and Oxford uh, to play in the subsequent weeks. So uh, it is going to be very difficult for Crawley now. But it is, I think, going to be uh, one of those three sides, Plymouth, London, Bridgewater, that end up in that second spot. Only two points separate them all. Um, so it's one to certainly keep an eye on. Uh, Division 1 North, two screens for this one because there are so many games. Uh, Barnsley against Norton, Stockton Ancients. These are all the Sunday games. That's third against ninth. Bradford City against York is 11th against eighth. Another winnable game for Bradford there. Durham Sestra against Stockport County. First against fourth. Probably the big game at, towards the top there. Stockport, again, they are too far adrift. They've got 15 points available. The most they can get to is 43 and Durham already have 44. So Stockport are completely out of it. Um, so there are only three teams left in the title hunt. Uh, but realistically, um, with Barnsley, even if they win both games in hand, being six points back, uh, you wonder if Barnsley are just going to be too far back, although they have given it a very good go. They still have Newcastle to play, um, but because they don't have Durham left to play, Durham have five games left. Uh, but, of course, there is that Newcastle game between them and Durham coming up. So they can't both get three points from that one. So uh, maybe, you know, with Barnsley, if they beat Newcastle uh, and then if uh, Newcastle beat Durham, Barnsley would still have a couple of games in hand. Maybe don't discount Barnsley just yet. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself there. Uh, and then in the week, everybody plays in the week. Barnsley against Hull, that's third against fifth. Chorley against Stockport, tenth against fourth. Mersey Rail against Bradford. That's that really big game on Tuesday. Uh, Newcastle against Durham. That's the really big game on Tuesday as well. Leeds take on York. Seventh against eighth. Norton Stockton against Middlesbrough. That's ninth against sixth. So this could be a really important week uh, in Division 1 North at both ends of the table. So you know, if, for example, Durham beat Newcastle, that gap will then go to 10 points. Yes, Newcastle have two games in hand. But then that still makes it four. So you've still then need Durham to slip up twice in their remaining like four games um, in order to. No, it's not even going to be that, is it? It'll be they need to slip up twice in their remaining three games um, if they uh, if they were to beat Newcastle in midweek and of course win at the weekend. So could be a really important week for the Division One North table and towards the bottom as well. Mersey Rail against Bradford. If Mersey Rail lose that game. Uh, then it's going to be at least a seven-point gap with only three games to go. And as I alluded to earlier, with the likes of Stockport and Leeds to play towards the end of the season, Stockport fourth, Leeds seventh, but with so many games in hand that Leeds could easily be in the top uh, top four or five in the table as well, um, it's going to be very difficult for Mersey Rail. Division one, Midlands then. Uh, we've got Leafford Athletic against Long Eaton United this weekend. That is uh, seventh against twelfth. Of course, the Long Eaton United have to win to have any chance of staying up. Lincoln City against Stourbridge, eighth against first. Lincoln City, not in the uh, best run of form at the moment. They have uh, lost their last uh, five league games. Uh, we mentioned earlier on in the season that they were, um, you know, they had a difficult start to the season. 
They were building themselves back up. Now they've lost the last five in a row. So they were on 12 games played, 19 points. And now they are on um, 17 games played and 19 points. If we go back to the middle of January, just after they um, won their last league game, uh, you can see, well, from my table, I can see that uh, they had got themselves up to second with 19 points from 12 games. Yes, Doncaster Rovers Bells had only played like eight games, whatever, but Lincoln had got themselves up to second um, with 19 points, and now they are all the way back down again. Um, they are, you know, they did enough in the middle of the uh, in the season to, to, well, I say they did enough in the middle of the season to not get dragged into a relegation battle. They are well in a relegation battle because they're only two points above the drop zone. Um, Sheffield and Wemtown. Sheffield are level with Lincoln City. Uh, it's only one goal uh, that is keeping Lincoln above Sheffield. But Sheffield have got three games in hand. And there's only two points separating Lincoln and Wem. And Wem have a game in hand as well. And there are only two points separating Lincoln and Leek Town. And they are level on, uh, level on uh, games played. They both have five to go. Um, and with Lincoln facing Stourbridge and Solihull Moors in their uh, in their running, keep an eye on that. I don't think anybody. Um, like Leaford Athletic are only five points from safety. Northampton Town, who are in fifth in Division One Midlands, are only six points above the drop zone. It is so tight towards the bottom there. Um, So Lincoln City have Stourbridge, Northampton Town take on Doncaster Rovers Bells, that's 5th against 2nd, Peter United take on Wemtown, 6th against 10th, Leek Town against Sheffield again, 11th against 9th, obviously they drew in the reverse fixture last week. Um, So if, for example, um, well, I mean, no, it's simple now, it's if Leafield Athletic um, get anything from the game against Long Eaton United, then Long Eaton United are relegated. Um, then in the week, Stourbridge against Wemtown, that's first against 10th. Long Eaton United take on Sporting Cowza, 12th against 3rd. Uh, Division 1 South East then. Ashford Town against Norwich City, 6th against 4th. Cambridge United take on Wimbledon, that's 8th against 2nd. London Seaward against Actonians, 3rd against 5th. Queen's Park Rangers against Hashtag United, 7th against 1st. So, uh, Hashtag United and Wimbledon, both with winnable games uh, against teams in the bottom half of the table. As I said, only a two-point gap separates uh, those two. Then in the week, Cambridge City against Norwich City, 10th against 4th. And then on Wednesday, Ashford Town against Queen's Park Rangers, that's 6th against 7th. Very much a mid-table game, that one. Uh, finally, Division 1 South West, Exeter City against Port Zed Town, 1st against 8th, Keenstrom Town against Moneyfields, that's 9th against 4th, uh, South, uh, sorry, Maidenhead United against AFC St. Austell, 10th against 12th, important game down towards the bottom, Southampton Women take on Cardiff, 5th against 2nd, Swindon Town against Selsey, 6th against 7th, in the week, Larkhall Athletic take on Cardiff on Wednesday, and Southampton Women face Bournemouth so again Cardiff City uh, having one of their games in hand against Exeter coming up in this week a possible six point week for them Uh, of course they can't overtake Exeter if Exeter beat Porter Z um, but they will have one of their games in hand they could reduce it to just one Bournemouth now they are 10 points away from the top of the table and they have uh, only 12 points available. So you have to assume that Bournemouth's title race is over because Exeter are going to get um, a win in their final five games, you feel, um, particularly when they have coming up. Uh, well, they've got two against Swindon, a Maidenhead and a Celsi. Um, so they've got 10th, 7th and two against 6th um, coming up uh, as well after this game against Porter Z. So they are going to pick up wins. Um, but Cardiff uh, are still in the driving seat. They know if they win all of their remaining games, then they will win the league. So that one could also go right down to the wire because I expect those two teams to keep winning. Um, Down towards the bottom, Austell, they cannot go down this weekend um, because the worst, it's going to be a 13-point gap with 15 available. Um, But AFC Austell, 
uh, need to beat Maidenhead, you feel, because if Maidenhead do uh, get the victory in that one, it's going to be at least a 12 point gap uh, with Keensham against Moneyfields, and it could be even more than that. Um, but that will just about cover it for this week's women's football chat. As I said, we are really getting down into the interesting uh, section of the league now. Once we hit April, I'll start getting the running screens going for those that still have the uh, possibility of winning the league. But thank you very much for watching and or listening this week's women's football chat. As I said, snow still coming down here in the East Midlands. So, and it is meant to carry on as well for the next few days. So check before you travel to your game this weekend because some may well fall foul of the weather. Even though we are in the middle of March, uh, I don't think any of us really expected this uh, snow. Certainly I didn't expect it to be this heavy. But thank you very much for watching and or listening this week's Women's Football Chat. Keep supporting your local women's football team. And goodbye. <laughs>